Oh, but here's the good news. Guys, we're going to have a ton of really great content after my girls weekend that's coming up. Oh, gosh. We're going to have a bonus episode. It's going to be a good time. I'm very, very excited. Turn this light off so I can stop being blind. I'm like a prisoner. I have like little like marks in my office. Yes, you are a prisoner. <sighs> you can't hang out with me. Y'all, I can't even. Today has been a, like, I feel like you can see it on my face. <laughs> like, all right, everybody on the count of three, give me a clap or some sort of sound in the microphone so I can sync I it up just you in the case. Clap because I don't have it, okay? Anybody want? <laughs> Joe, yeah. text, Joe texts me, uh, you, he quoted you and said, I have new, uh, I have new audio problems and, it ha- and I haven't touched anything to change. He goes, welcome to our world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let me, know, let me know when to clap. All right, ready? One, two, three. Try it one more time. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, let's try something different because that didn't work. So I'm going to say one. Chris, you say two. Mary, you say three. Okay. Yeah. But as so, so as soon as I'm done with one, Chris says two, and then as soon as Chris says two, Mary says three. Okay. okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. So At we, least we should, we, we should just we should just sing a whole song. Yeah, we could sync up like uh, uh, like I pledge allegiance to the flag of the like we could no, just we have to be something like I see a little silhouette of a man and then Mary goes. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Like I don't care if I get on this journey tonight. Okay, but like quick, like a bunny because I'm tired. Guys. I feel bad because I I feel like we should be on for the last. one. I know, I know, I know. I wasn't I know gonna I, come until he said I, that. I killed the whole podcast. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I said I'm not. This is going to be my last week on Dis Journey. Can I show and then, you guys something really quickly, it. though, before sure. we start? Yes. We, we got a new toy for waffles. Uh-huh. I'm not really understanding what it was going to look like because it was in a package. But can you tell me whether this looks appropriate or not? <laughs> was it for waffles or for you? <laughs> I can't throw it to her. Was, was that a... Was that a <laughs> Was that a, did Erica was send that you a, dying Erica laughing. Said, I was like, it looks like it was <laughs> Is the sex coach coming back on? Did she send you a goodie bag? <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. All right, you guys ready? All right, quick like a bunny. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Oh, Lord. Welcome back to the No New Friends Podcast. If you listen to us. Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast with Scott, Mary, and Chris. If you listen to us on Apple, please give us a five star review. Please give us a five star rating and review. Please join our Patreon. And remember, during the month of October and November, we will be donating all of our money earned on Patreon to the Gina, Gina McReynolds Foundation. That's www.patreon.com/slash No New Friends Podcast. Now. Right before, or right on the break, you guys were talking about something that I tuned out for, but uh, it was about like That's things you did right. as a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things you did as a kid, or read as a kid, or watched as a kid, and you know how it made you feel then versus now. So I went on the Diz His podcast this week. We did the history of Captain EO, which was a super good time. And Joe from Diz His is really into this television show, Turner and Hooch. On Disney Joe, Plus. Joe has awful taste in TV shows and movies, and I hope right. he hears this. So he, here's Wait, the thing. So it's, a, it's a TV show based off of based Tom off Hanks. of the movie. Yeah, yeah, the Tom Hanks movie, Turner and Hooch. So okay. I told Joe, I, I cannot watch this television show. He's like, why? It's great. I'm like, because I have a soul. The do- spoiler alert, the dog died in the movie. Like yeah, yeah. That, nice. that scene traumatized me as a kid. And as a result, I cannot watch movies with an animal in it because I'm afraid that the animal's going to die. Like I have not watched because of Winn-Dixie or Marley and me just out of fear that the dog is going to die. So we know I, that it will, though, in all of those movies. It's not really a fear. It's what? So, yes. No, in all of those movies, the main premise is that the dog dies. So, well, yeah. I didn't know that in Turner and Hooch. I didn't know the dog was going to yeah, die. There's, there's no reason for the dog to die. I, yeah. Scott, exactly. Scott, I'm in the same comedy. boat as you with dogs. I played this video game called Red Dead Redemption, and you're a you're an outlaw, and you kill people and stuff. Well, I went to go murder this guy and take all his money and stuff, just like a normal outlaw would mm-hmm. in the wild, wild west. Mm-hmm. Then his dog comes up and starts attacking me. I can't kill the dog. 
There's just, there was just no way I was killing the dog. The dog kills me in the game. Didn't know dogs could kill people. Dog kills me in the game, and I lose. Couldn't kill the dog. And you know what? <laughs> to this day, I would I wouldn't have changed a thing. Look, we <laughs> all have a moral compass that we have to live by. I, I know. It's just it's just the code. Part of it. part of my code. You have to have a code. The dogs are supposed to be like the mountain people, though, where they just kind of walk around in circles in the simulation. They don't actually it's like interact really? with you. I, well, I was I was shocked. Game, I was shocked. This this game was not modeled after the cat skills for sure. <laughs> So, Mary, what what movie as a kid or what scene from a movie as a kid traumatized you? And I've okay. got some more as well, but take us take a, us through it. OK, I have a few and I'm just going to go through all of them and we can circle back if we'd like. And OK, uh, which ones? So um, my dad's a super, super intelligent human uh, and wanted to uh, pass that down to my sister and I. So at a very young age, I would say I was probably eight, maybe he had me watch the entire Roots series oh uh i don't know if you've watched that before I great try that. great great movie for children yeah uh a fine family fun mm-hmm. two very enthusiastic thumbs up great actor in that movie his name yeah, is um, um james uh oj simpson was oj in that yes i know you lavar know, burton was in it i couldn't tell because i was probably having a seizure somewhere <laughs> um so that was one that really got to me uh maybe that's why the two things that bother the, me the most in the world are um injustice humidity. and humidity humidity and, and injustice yes see i Those listen i listen and i pay attention this is what best friends are for you know what you get you get bonus points for that thank you i give i give i give you a hard time but uh you know i care i appreciate that um i would say outside of that so two opposite sides of the spectrum one like the emotional side is on um my girl when she says he oh. needs, like he, he can't he see without, without his glasses, glasses. Yeah. Oh. okay so here's why oh. it really gets me like it's always got like it got me as a kid but now even like like dexter wears glasses and like my kid like i just like things like that like i'm like oh my god i can't like i can't oof even now Oof, I can't handle it. I oh my God. It. I forgot about that when I was yeah, when I was thinking about this topic. Glasses, and like, oh my I just my soul. Also, okay, <sighs> going back down a, a rough, rough patch. Um, steel magnolias. With as a Jim. kid? You watch that as a kid? Yes. Look, my oh, my hmm. favorite movie growing up when I was like 10 or 9 was Revenge of the Nerds. I'm pretty sure my parents <laughs> were just like, you know what? It's a great movie. Watch it. It'll be fine. You really uh, like tragedy. I get my you wonder where I get my sense of humor from. Here it is. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. So, but, so I watched Steel Magnolias as a kid and like things like that. Like if, if Mary was awesome. growing up, if Mary grew up as a kid in like the the two thousands, I'm sure, you know, right right after homework was done, Game of Thrones would be on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you think my kids are raised? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think that I may have like over calibrated and like maybe like overcompensated a little bit and I may shelter my little ones a little too much, but I'm getting better at it. But outside of that, so like scary movie realm, for the longest time, I was afraid to sleep in my bed because I thought somebody could get underneath it. And from Friday the 13th, once again, not appropriate. As a kid, and- Mary. I know, in the words of oh Dexter, um, unappropriated. So unappropriated. after they get done banging in the like cabin, and the the uh, they get up, the guy's laying in bed, and they the thing comes up through the bed through oh, his yeah. neck. I thought about that way too much. Like I slept on the floor until I was probably twelve because I was afraid uh, somebody was going to stab me through. That's my what bed. premarital sex does to you; kills you it right is. on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So when, when, when I was thinking of this topic, I was, I really thought that the direction we were going to go on this is uh, like the, the, the horse drowning in the, you know, the swamp in flight of the uh, uh, never ending story. Um, like that oh yeah, is a, that was rough too yeah that was right yeah well yeah that's nothing to you compared to you yeah, know friday the 13th I, I, like I, instead I, of saturday I, morning cartoons mary's watching like freddie versus jason uh that wasn't out yet <laughs> uh, but i like to think that i was that young no i think that my parents just introduced me into like you know adult type of uh cinematic features at a a younger age, which is fine. Uh, I handled it fine. Look at me thriving, kind of surviving. Um, 
but I do have a, I think I, I have great taste in movies now, but there are those select handfuls that really just like, I cannot, but on the opposite side, scenes that get me to where I'm like, oh, because I'm so choked up. My favorite movie of all time, everyone listening, here is your, uh, this is embarrassing for me to even say, my guilty pleasure and favorite movie is You've Got Mail. And at the end, when Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan meet in Central Park. I was hoping it'd be you. Oh, God, stop. I will cry. I will. I'll do it. (laughs) How about this? Grief is just love persists. Nope, nope. Stop, Stop, sir. You stop. That too. Also that. Um, I'm an emotional human. I can't help it. Chris, I think that I would have, I would be completely, uh, not, I would have no sensitivity because of what I've experienced, but it's fine. Chris, what, what movies, uh, are nightmares made of for you? And, you know, uh, just growing up and, and you're a lot younger than me. You're a little bit younger than Mary. What, what kind of a lot younger, like for, uh, again, for me, uh, back to never any story mm. that 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 mean like black cat dog looking thing that was in the cave that thing traumatized me or or the tunnel scene in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory you know is it winter is it going is, uh, it, raining, <laughs> is it snowing is a hurricane a blowing I have uh weird weird traumas to movies i i can guarantee you that what i tell you no one has ever worried about in their life so the anxiety that i deal with today stemmed from somewhere and it uh i looking back i didn't know what it was back then now i totally know what it was back then so there's four movies that stick out to me five if you include super bowl 39 but taking that one off the list (laughs) (laughs) taking that one off the list uh, number coming in at number one, artificial intelligence. Why was I afraid of artificial intelligence? Because the movie I, with uh, Haley Joel Osment. It is a movie with a robot kid. Okay, and the robot kid is a robot kid, and he outlives his mom, and then what needs to bring his mom back to life. And I had this weird fear when I was younger, and it might have been because we were in that like era where cloning was a thing. And, and yes, like, it was she, Haley Joel Osment, by the there, way. There we go. So cloning was a thing back then. And like, so all these weird thoughts would go in my mind. I watching this movie, I thought I was going to turn into a robot and outlive my mom. So that one had me shaking on the floor. That uh, that was an actual reaction in the movie. Coming in at number two uh, was a movie called Raise Your Voice with Hilary Duff. Pretty sure Hilary Duff was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. Got a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm pretty sure that was the one. That movie in the first five minutes, the Wait, I'm gonna stop you right there, sir. Did you not have the same Rotten Tomatoes IMDB rule then as you do now in your household? Like you would never let Emily watch such okay, a Okay. So I was young and uh my mom brought this home from Blockbuster. So okay. it was okay. nothing that I could so <laughs> anyway. Okay, continue on, yeah. So in the first five minutes, a brother gets killed in a car accident, and since Ooh. I'm a brother, I started dry heaving. So that yeah. was another one that traumatized me. That is true. Coming thing. in, coming in at number three, the cartoon Disney movie Atlantis. In that movie, there's this switch that turns off gravity and people float away. I still, my palms sweat when I go into buildings that you look up and it's really high, because <laughs> now my fear of heights goes both ways because of that movie. Uh, Chris, Chris was traumatized by American Boot. I, I just. <laughs> Chris was traumatized by American Beauty with the bag floating around. Uh, you know, it could <laughs> decapitate a bird or something. Oh, yeah. When balloons start to fly away from people. Oh, terrible. So coming in at number four. And this particular scene traumatized me so much. And people forget that this scene exists because when I was talking to it with the Diz His guys, they didn't even know this scene that existed. E.T. dying in a river. Yes. Traumatized the hell out of me. Yes. Because, because I don't I, I don't know why. Did I think that oxygen was going to become poisonous for me and I was going to start to die in a river? I have no idea. But I specifically remember him pale, keeled over. Because that movie was one of my favorite movies growing up. It's yeah. funny because it, it it I as much as it scared me, is, is as much as I enjoyed it. Because and that's a 99% scary of the movie, movie is great. as a kid. It's a terrifying movie. A lot but, of things that you'll but, enjoy in life will scare you, but you may not. Like <laughs> I, I mean, that's know. what I kind of liked because it scared me, but I enjoyed the hell out of it as well. But watching E.T. die in that river, traumatizing. To this day, yeah. when that scene comes on, they come in in the, 
in the big like hazmat suits and they scoop them up. Oh my gosh, scared the hell out of me. Yeah, E.T. was definitely number one on my list for movies that traumatized me. And E.T. is one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah. To this day. Maybe it's because I love being in pain. <laughs> what else right, you, you Scott? Got? That's all for me. I that was that was definitely the top four traumatizing movies. I was never scared of like horror movies or anything because I I just I, I didn't really believe in that stuff. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, and I didn't start watching horror movies until uh, much later in life. You know, Mary Mary came out of the you mean you were in three K watching, watching you know <laughs> Pet Cemetery or something like that. Street. Right. No. 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 So it, it's it's Turner and Hooch messed me up pretty good you know like i said uh never ending story and um uh willy wonka in that one scene i'm trying to think of other uh, my girl i completely forgot mm. about my girl and, and and i'm just i'm a big sap you know i can't see titanic without the opening credits starting and i'm a blubbering yeah. oh, I, I, I think titanic is the most overrated movie of all time oh you're right you're especially no, now is. especially oh, I now it. i just I mean, man, there's a lot. So there's one as an adult, like I haven't even watched this whole movie because I can't make it past the first like 15 minutes. Uh, P.S. I love you. I oh, have, my God. Yes. I can't make it. I've yeah. never made it past the first like 15 minutes of the movie. I can't. Is that the saddest movie you've ever seen? What's the saddest movie you've ever seen? I can't even name one. I've never cried during a movie. Oh, I would have to say P.S. I love you or ghost. The very oh, first time I saw so Ghost, and I was younger, I was in probably elementary school, maybe a little bit older, and I remember we rented it from Blockbuster, and um, I, I, my mom and my sister and my cousin, we were watching it all together, and they got their box of tissues out, and I'm like, you guys are idiots, like, this, you know, bleh, 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 making fun of them. By the end of this, I am <laughs> just a mess. It's Man, oh, it's I, really sad. Oh, uh, my I, girl is on the list of saddest movies ever made. Oh, no, for I'm sure. You right now, like, and it's not. A, I just kid oof. deaths are the worst. Oof, man. Uh, um, I old think Yeller. I, no. I mean, like the fact that we had to watch, like, that was a Disney movie. I had to watch that as a kid with the I'm having to shoot oh, the dog. Man, I don't no know. Thing. Look, Ugh. I think too like let's just revisit things that maybe it wasn't sad but like man like introspective like the movie soul that came out from disney like that, that made, made you think like, that made me think but that i cried a lot man that was like a thing for me Whew. that was a mover i very traumatic for me and and chris you could probably relate to this okay uh, since we're, we're kind of hoarders and all that uh-huh uh the ending of toy story three oh you know what that was the closest i've ever gotten to crying during a movie i'm not gonna lie that was because i felt that scott i felt that i i'm a, i'm gonna cry right now when i was unpacking my storage unit i found my stuffed animals from like as a kid and i'm like okay i gotta get rid of these i didn't get rid of them i can't oh, get no, rid of them I, I like i don't i don't i've never met a toy or stuffed animal that i got rid of like, I love them all and they will be with me for uh, forever. And the fact that Andy had to donate the, ooh, like that was uh, and, I, and it was even harder for me because Andy was like my like growing up like that was my age. Like, so when he was going off to you know school, like that was like that was me. Oh. So I was like, I, I was like, I could never I could never. And that's why I never have. That's why I have. Um, <laughs> that's why I just bought a storage unit the other day. I'm following in your footsteps, Scott. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and that's a that's a little bit of a teaser going into segment three, because Chris let me in on something uh, right before we started recording yeah. that I cannot wait for him to share with us. I, we're going to Mary, you and I are going to have to be here for him for some therapy because uh, Chris got rid of some things today. And we're going to talk about that when we return. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast. We'll be right back. <laughs> 